Welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'm your host, Mitch Yuen. Our underwriter is the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, which is a program of the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. I'm very pleased to welcome our guest and my very good friend, Dave Donald, who is the founder of Hawaiian Blue Volcanic Coffee. Today, Dave's gonna talk to us about his specialty coffee adventure at Hall Farms in Waimea on the island of Hawaii. Dave, welcome to the show. Why coffee and why Waimea? How did you get started? Well, aloha. Thanks, Mitch, for having me on your show. Appreciate it. Um, why Waimea? Well, I moved to Waimea. <laughs> so that's where I was living and uh, where I was living. It was a, uh, a small little plant, two feet tall. and uh, I wasn't sure what it was because it, uh, I wasn't that familiar with coffee at the time. It was back in 2016. And uh, I asked someone about the, uh, the plant and they said, yeah, that's coffee. And I said, how long has it been growing there? And they said, oh, about 25 years. And I said, well, isn't it kind of small? And they said, yeah, well, coffee doesn't seem to grow well in Waimea. And that just challenged me. And Six months later, I managed to get it up to around six feet and flowering and fruiting for the first time in 25 years. Took off from there. Pretty awesome. So let's look at uh, the first slide. And, and this is your awesome logo. I love it. Talk to us about that. Uh, essentially coffee flowers. So really, uh, you know, uh, Waimea is a bit of a desert. It's considered a desert, yet you were able to grow coffee trees there. Tell us about that. So, so there's a, a wet side and a dry side to Waimea. And uh, on the dry side, there's um, some farm lots called Lala Milo farm lots right next door to Park Ranch headquarters. And it's definitely considered desert because it rains less than 10 inches a year. That's the, the standard. And we get about eight inches of rain a year. Um, but Lala Milo farm lots has a well-established irrigation system designed for the farm lots back in the 1950s. And um, so with that, there are many successful farms here growing various sorts of leafy green vegetables, some flower farms, tomatoes, things like that. And uh, I was just given the opportunity to take some of the seeds from the mother tree and plant them on the farm. And they took off and they're growing really well here. So if you look at uh, pull up slide three, this is what Waimea is supposed to look like. Horses, trees, and beautiful hills, but I don't see any coffee trees there. <laughs> They're close by. They're not in that shot, but I think you've got some other shots of the coffee trees. I do. So you pulled off a miracle, basically. Nobody thought you could ever do that. Coffee just doesn't grow in Waimea, right? That, that's that's what folks said. I mean, it does grow on the wet side of, of Waimea, but on the dry side, you won't see any. Yeah, so one of your differentiators, Dave, as I understand it, is like you're getting into green energy and uh, your uh, whole uh, value chain is going to be based on renewable energy. So let's have the next slide, uh, slide four. And uh, that looks like a pretty... Um, impressive system, space age. So, so yeah. uh, Paul's farm, uh, Howard, who you've had on a previous show, he's um, set up a, a very substantial solar array on top of his 100 foot long barn. And um, he's got those blue ion battery uh, racks uh, storing all the energy that he's uh, manufacturing with the panels. And that's what's powering the entire farm, including the container that I'm in, which is the coffee lab you'll see in a, in a few minutes. And um, so we're, there's no utility poles on this uh, property, on this farm. Everything is coming from the sun. Uh, and he's got some intention of installing a hydrogen electrolyzer production facility and fuel, fueling station in the near future. But in the meantime, um, what we're really interested in, we're, we're interested in trying to understand how coffee grows and how we can grow the highest quality coffee. 
And so in order to do that, we're, we're looking at um, different methods of farming, uh, regenerative agriculture, and uh, ways that we can produce uh, with a, a carbon neutral um, result or even a carbon negative result. So that goes back to all the energy that we use and it goes to the style of farming that we practice. And uh, even with the hydrogen, we'll be using that eventually to roast coffee instead of using natural gas or propane. So that's uh, going that way and the route you're going, that, that helps keep any kind of contaminants uh, and things that could affect the taste of the coffee out of the system. Uh, do you like to comment on that, Dave? Yeah, well, <clears throat> coffee is a complex uh, drink, more complex than I ever realized. And they say, you know, in wine, there's maybe a thousand different flavor descriptors. In coffee, apparently, there's as many as 10,000. And so we're researching right now the health of the soil, and the health of the plants and how the plants proximity to other plants um, and other trees affects the flavor of the coffee. And, um, and so it's, it, you know, there's, there's a few good films uh, available to watch on the intelligence of trees and how they interact and on the, uh, the mycorrhizae um, in the earth and how there's, it's interesting, you know, we have the World Wide Web, they call it the Wood Wide Web. It's a, it's a, 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 a sort of a layer of um, my, uh, mycorrhiza that is just millimeters underneath the surface of the earth. And it, uh, it carries the communication between all uh, trees and plants. And so we're researching that and um, you know, we're doing experiments right now. We have the ability to uh, harvest from a, a particular tree and process it all the way to roasted coffee and compare that to the flavor of the next tree or the next tree or the next tree. And so we're, we're refining our research and we're, we're developing the best flavor profile that we feel is desirable. Well, let's have the next slide up. I want to show Dave's toy for the boy. There it is, guys, a, an electric tractor and no exhaust fumes. Talk about your new tractor, Dave. I know it hasn't arrived yet, but. Well, we're looking forward to this. Uh, there's one on Oahu already, and uh, we'll have the first one on Hawaii Island. And um, yeah, it's, it, again, you know, we'll be able to charge it from power created by the sun and it charges uh, fully in four hours and then gives you eight hour runtime. And what I like about it is that I won't have to wear these guys while driving it. Um, and uh, I won't have to breathe in diesel fumes. And uh, it's, it's just a nice clean and, and any kind of operation you want to use with a tractor, we don't till the land, we're a no-till operation because it's an orchard. But there are different things that we have to do and occasionally we have to spray. And we spray USDA organic uh, you know, chemicals like uh, insecticidal soap or something, but, uh, or neem oil in particular. Uh, that's one of our favorites. And, um, and so the machinery uh, that applies that onto the trees typically is operated by a gas powered motor. In this case, It'll be PTO driven right off an electric tractor. So again, uh, carbon neutral. And, um, and uh, you know, because we're not tilling the land, we're creating a carbon sink with the land and the trees. Right. So sure. eventually we will be carbon negative. And you're not drowning the trees in diesel exhaust either, or oil or all the it, other things that are spewed up by a fossil fuel engine. It, Exactly. And we don't have that cost. We don't have that cost to buy fuel. Right, exactly. So let's go on to the next slide because nobody's, nobody knew it actually snowed in Waimea. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, the, when the flowers blossom in Kona, they call it Kona snow. 
And so uh, now that we have a coffee farm in Waimea, we call it Waimea snow. There you go, great. Next slide. So standing guard over all of this is that uh we have some spectacular about. views. We're you know, we're on we're sort of it's debatable whether we're on the slopes of Kohala Mountains or uh, Mount Akea because we're right sort of in between. But um, we have this spectacular view of the top of uh, Mount Akea when it's snow capped. And uh, I think that shot shows the, the flowers blossoming and the snow on top of Mount Akea. So, looking to the future, next slide, you have a pretty aggressive. Uh, a seedling uh, program for uh, new uh, new trees. So tell us a little bit about some of the challenges and what your plans are there, Dave. Currently, we have around 3,000 seedlings that are getting ready to plant. And um, interestingly, there's there's two uh, issues that coffee farmers in the state are, are up against right now. One is CBB, coffee berry borer, a little beetle, an insect. And the other is uh, CLR, coffee leaf rust, which I believe is a fungus. And um, so these are prevalent in, on all islands and, um, and on a lot of farms. And they're pretty devastating. Because we're so isolated here, um, we, knock on wood, don't have any of those issues right now. But we do have more sort of, um, traditional or more familiar insects like mealybug or green scale. And so typically we'll use um, neem oil uh, and uh, we'll, which is a, a, a really uh, effective organic product to use to, to treat them. So, so, you know, we're developing these seedlings using neem cake and neem oil treatments to get them as healthy as possible before we plant them. So let's have a look at Dave's fantastic lab. Next slide, there you go. Dave, th this is beautiful. So tell us about your lab. Well, we, we, uh, we, have, a, we have a wet mill outside where we process and in, inside uh, we're setting up a dry mill. We have some machinery. There's probably a shot there of a, a green bean sorter. It's a, computer-driven artificial intelligence green bean sorter. Um, and um, we have some uh, ability to dry and isolate the, the trees, as I said earlier. But once all of that's done, um, we want to drink the coffee. So we need a, a lab where we can uh, hull a small amount of the parchment and roast a small amount and uh, cup it. And so we do that in this lab and we have a little cupping lanai outside, you'll see. Um, okay. okay, hang on. Tell us about cupping. This sounds like uh, some millennial kind of a thing. Um, no, it's, it's the process of uh, identifying and, and uh, you know, desirable flavor descriptors and scoring. And so, you know, we're in the fourth wave of coffee, the, the first wave, began a hundred years ago and was essentially World War II where they just produ mass produced coffee and they shipped it out to the troops to keep them awake. And then the wave two was in the sixties when you started to see coffee shops and, and a few coffee shops started to become their own roasters. And then wave three and now wave four is this specialty coffee uh, level. So just like in the wine industry, you can buy a $10 bottle of wine or a $10,000 bottle of wine. In the coffee industry, you can buy a, a cup of coffee for a few dollars, or you can buy a cup of coffee for $100. And, uh, and so uh, there's a specialty coffee association, and they've established a scoring system, and they've established uh, courses to train people to cup coffee, where they're called sensory experts and uh, Q graders. And they look at the coffee and they taste it and they smell it. And, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a whole process. There's a lot of loud noises and a lot of slurping and sipping and spitting. <laughs> and, <Gross>. uh, <laughs> and they score the coffee. But you know, you have um, 
farms like the Lamastis farm down in Boquete, Panama, who's selling his green bean for $1,200 a pound. Well, that so, opens up a whole new, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, uh, no, you go ahead. I, I, I was leaving. Yeah, okay, it. so that, that opens up the, the, uh, the, the idea of high value agricultural products. So what, why don't you tell us about your thoughts on that, Dave? Right, so uh, farming in, in general is endangered. Uh, a, lot of, um, a, a lot of the farmers are retiring across the country and in Hawaii, and um, their sons and daughters are not apt to follow them because it's hard work. And uh, unless the crop is an extremely valuable one, there's not a lot of return. Um, and often farms are sold off as subdivisions, you know, and uh, that's unfortunate because it's valuable land because it's uh, high in nutrition to grow. So um, there's, we're sort of rethinking the whole industry and something called high value agricultural product or HVAP is the acronym is, um, is what is attractive to uh, some folks and certainly myself because We've been scored as um, uh, specialty coffee, and we're selling our coffee uh, for uh, a high price. And uh, we're working hard to push the score higher and higher and higher to get a greater price over the the seasons. So there's there's other high value agricultural products. Um, you know, one that comes to mind is wasabi, for instance. Uh, right. That's that's an HVAP. So there's there's a number of them. And so that's, it's the wave of the future. And how do you do this profitably? One of the ways is by pursuing a, um, a sort of a, car a carbon neutral way of farming using solar, hydrogen, et cetera, uh, you know, to, to produce your crop. Yeah, you're producing the yeah, purity of your product has a great influence on how it tastes and how, the, how it's valued by people that are buying it. So next uh, slide, uh, let's have another view of your lab looking. Uh, I love your shiny floors, Dave. <laughs> I could eat it. off that floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's just epoxy. <laughs> okay, so next slide. So the lab huller, you know, this is a, a mini version. Uh, a large machine would be able to do hundreds and hundreds of pounds of parchment taking the husk off the parchment uh, per hour. But this is just a, a very small hulling machine that's designed for lab and it does, you know, like half a pound and takes a couple of minutes. And, and that's what I was talking about earlier. The purpose of the lab is to, you know, prepare uh, coffee from samples and see, you know, taste how this tree compares to that tree or this grove compares to that grove or this month compares to that month's harvest. Um, so we're doing all kinds of tests. Let's, uh, let's flash up the lab roaster, because that's uh, a companion piece. Yeah, again, it's just, just a, just a mini, mini roaster. Um, roasters are designed for specific quantities. So big roasters are usually five to 30 pounds. But if we're all we're roasting is a quarter pound or a half pound, we need a small machine like this. OK. So let's uh, have a look at what a cherry looks like. And what is a cherry anyway, Dave? You know, coffee, it's interesting. Coffee is related to the gardenia family or gardenias are related to the coffee family. I'm not sure which way it goes, but anyhow, um, they produce uh, this very beautiful and fragrant white flower that lasts only around 24 hours. And uh, the flower falls off and then gradually over time, uh, you start to see a green berry uh, that starts to form. And as it grows it, and matures, it starts to turn color. It goes through various stages of yellow and orange and then finally red. And when it is ripe to pick, the color will be quite a deep red, very much like a, a, a cherry. And uh, when you see a tree covered in ripe coffee cherries, hence the name cherries, and, um, and then you, you pick them when they're that beautiful deep burgundy red. Sounds good. So uh, let's look at the various stages of uh, coffee bean uh, processing. Uh, in, in this shot, you're probably looking at some 
cherry pulp in a tray. And then um, I think there's a bag of parchment. And um, so underneath the red pulp, uh, there's first mucilage, which you ferment off, and then it remains parchment. And this is sort of a hard shell that covers the green bean. So that has to be hulled. Um, and um, uh, after it's hulled, you get the green bean and, um, the, um, and then it's roasted. But to, to get to that stage, it's quite a long time. It takes at least three weeks to dry the parchment. And then you wanna store the parchment for at least three months to let it rest before you hull it. And then um, once you hull it, uh, you have a shorter time to roast it. And once it's roasted, it should be drunk within three weeks. <laughs> wow, it's quite the process. Uh, let's have a look at the next slide. So at the end of the day, after all that time, it ends up in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a sample bag. We have a very simple looking product. All right. And da -da, roll the drums for the next slide. Well, we were fortunate to um, have an opportunity. At the last moment, we realized we had an opportunity to enter the statewide uh, cupping competition. There's two major contests in uh, Hawaii every year, and one is the Kona Coffee Farmers. And we're not in Kona, we're in Waimea. So we can't enter that one. But uh, we were able to enter the statewide competition. And um, uh, we managed to swing uh, first place in the Hawaii district. So uh, very grateful for that. And next year we intend to do even better. Awesome. Okay, I think uh, you wanna uh, reach out to a few people that helped you along this path. Well, I, I wouldn't have been able to do any of there this without, without Howard and Pat Paul. Uh, they've been phenomenal and extremely generous and kind and helpful right from the beginning. And uh, so we're, we're growing the coffee on their farm and they've um, installed this really fantastic um, solar and battery powered operation. And, um, uh, you know, Andrea um, Kawabata from CTAR has just been so generous with her time. And every time the University have, of Hawaii, I got to get a plug in for the University of Hawaii. University of Hawaii College of Tropical Agriculture Research and uh, Human Resources. And, right. um, and and Andrea is the, the coffee expert for for this island and probably for the state. And she's just wonderful. And um, we've also been helped tremendously by Pacific uh, Coffee Research, Brittany Horn. And uh, Brian Webb, uh, who's our roaster. Uh, Brittany's been our roaster as well, and Brian's been our roaster, um, and he has the Optimist uh, Roastery and Cafe. And um, uh, I forget who else is on the list because it's not in front of me. But well, uh, the Hawaii I Coffee think the most important, the most important person is my wife Anne Lee, who's my uh, partner, and Anne's a, a scientist, and so. Um, she spearheads all the experimentation in uh, in uh, growing the seedlings and helping me diagnose um, uh, issues with the trees and uh, understand what kind of treatments we need to apply and how to improve uh, everything. So, you know, we're fortunate because the, the coffee tree that, that we originally started with uh, was a hybrid developed by a professor at the University of Hawaii Hilo campus. And uh, it's um, the hybrid of Jamaican Blue Mountain and Guatemalan, which is what Kona coffee is. So uh, everything we're growing are keiki from that original mother tree, who's named after my, my maternal grandmother, Irene. <laughs> That's great. So are you going to start calling each of your trees by a specific name? I, I, I think that might be a good idea. It's better than row three tree number 45 so i i think i'm gonna to have to come up with names for everyone yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so let's have a look at the uh, i think uh, we're on our last slide now okay so your website i understand is under construction still yeah um, 
I mean, it's it's it's, it's, it's still it's still brewing, right, Dave? Still brewing. Um, yeah, it's steeping right now. It's it'll be up and running within a few weeks. I just uh, I have to go over some of the uh, some of the the wording, some of the writing and stuff. But it's it's essentially designed, but you know, a little bit of tweaking before okay. the big launch. Okay, we're almost at the end of the show, Dave. So I want to give you a chance not to be interrupted by me. But do you have any closing thoughts? And, and you know, maybe for other people that want to get in the business, or what have been some of your major challenges? And do you have any idea what kind of solutions are required in the agricultural sector to help people like yourself um, be more and be successful? Well, um, I wouldn't have been able to have done any of this without the help of the University of Hawaii uh, CTAR. Um, I mean, I can't, I, I can't state that uh, strongly enough that without the help of um, all of the uh, researchers and scientists at CTAR and all the knowledge they, they share with us freely. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, they, they don't charge you for that. that that's like a service. Yeah, the, the only cost to me is my my gas to get down to South Kona from, from Waimea. But, right. you know, it's all free of charge. And they even come and visit the farm. If you ask for them to come and visit the farm and they'll spend several hours in the farm, you know, looking at every individual tree, they'll help you with analyzing the soil. Uh, you can bring soil samples to the extension offices and within a week or so you get a complete nutritional report of what's in the soil and what you need and what you have too much of specific to the crop you're growing. So what's, a, what's an extension office? Uh, well, there's on this island, there's far, five extension offices of uh, CTAR. So they're, they're experimental farms and extension offices. and so at the office, uh, they're, they're manned by all of these researchers and scientists. And in the, in the instance of, uh, of coffee, that, that office is located in South Kona. Um, and so that, because I'm growing coffee, that's where I go. But the Waimea district has a, an extension office and they have an experimental farm growing tea, for instance. Volcano has an extension office and they grow berries and some root vegetables. So it's all appropriate to the region and uh so you, you just can show up there and uh you know ask questions and they're extremely helpful they they you know they have a display of all the services and courses that they offer and you can sign up and and take courses and seminars and now of course because of the pandemic we've been doing a lot of that through zoom or okay. your video conference like we are now yeah so dave we're out of time Okay. So we're going to uh, leave, leave it there. So thank you so much for coming on the show and giving us all your insight on, on your uh, Hawaiian uh, coffee and all your adventures and your successes. And we wish you success going forward, of course. So thank you so much, Dave. Thank you very much, Commander. Okay, I like that part. So aloha, everyone. This has been Mitch Ewan on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'll be back in two weeks with another action-packed show. So everybody, aloha.